Welcome back, folks. In our previous episode, we mined up a bunch of copper ore. All of this rich ore and some poor ore as well. And in this episode, we're going to do something with it. So the first thing we need to do is make up some molds. We already have over here a fired mold for a chisel. So let's make a prospector's pick. We're going to want a uh, oh a replacement for our uh, our regular pickaxe here. You can see it's already down to about half of its uh, strength. So replacement for a regular pickaxe. Um, an axe, a metal axe would be nice because it'll be faster chop down trees than the stone axes we've been using. Uh, Scythe, not really massively important, but it's handy. Can save some time. Uh, let's go for a shovel. And it'll be faster than a uh, stone shovel, and it will last longer as well. And it would be nice to have a sword. So when we run into the animals that want to make a meal of us, we can fight back a little better. Is that it? One, two, three, four, one, two, okay. And the last thing I'll do is, as you'll see in a moment, I'm gonna have two spare slots in a pit kiln available. So for those, I'll uh, put some ing ingot molds. And for those of you who haven't played TFC at all, we'll, I'll show you later what the ingot molds are all about. Okay, so we're going to be Firing a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Uh, six tool heads plus the one we got seeing on ground is seven. And then we'll want to be able to pro two ingots. So that means we need a total of nine unit or uh, uh, nine pourings. And there's going we use a hundred units of copper for pouring. So we need 900 units of copper. That's 560. So we need another 340. That's 280. 315. A 25 would be nice. Oh, I don't have any regular. Oh, there's one there. Okay, good. Okay, so that should do the trick then. Those th guys there. So 560 plus 315 gives us 875 and 75 gives us 900. Beauty. Okay. Take this vessel. Throw those guys in there. And start putting stuff in this pit kiln. Oh, right now it's just a pit. We'll turn it into a pit kiln shortly. I need a bunch of straw. And that's also a good reason to go after the weeds over here. That's that knife used up. I need ten more straw. Well, I know what I can do. I can clear the straw out from around where I'm going to be using the pit kilns, or clear the grass out. Otherwise, it'll catch fire. There we go. Twelve. I need four more. Sixteen. There we go. And we want to uh, oops, where am I going? There we go. Eight logs there. Oh, and uh, someone mentioned in the comments <coughs> that you can start up the pit kiln using a torch. 
Now, I knew you could do that with a uh, charcoal pit, which we'll get to later. Uh, I didn't realize you could do it with the pit cone as well. So let's uh, give that a try. Oh, too far. There we go. Yep, that looks like it's working. Okay. Let's get our other one started over here, I guess, is good enough. Yep. How did I come up with... I miscounted somehow. Oh, because I don't need to fire this guy, that's right. He's already fired. Still miscounted somehow. But, in my defense, I have a degree in math, not in arithmetic. Actually, I don't want to use up all my torches. So I'll go back to using one of these fire starters. Okay. What time is it? So it's just past midnight, so we would have started this one probably a little bit before midnight. And I think it runs for about eight hours. So what are we going to do for the next eight hours? Well, we'll do a few quickie things like check our berries. Still no berries. And the other thing I can do is demonstrate a couple of things for you. Um, oh, it's not very light out. Things I want to demonstrate will work better in light. So I'll tell you what. I'll go and check on some of the uh, some of the crops we have growing out there, and then. Uh, come back when it's light and well these will be done by then and uh, we'll move on from there so I'm not gonna bother showing you my tra travels back and forth unless something attacks me or I fall to my death or whatever so I'm just gonna hop from crop to crop as far as you're concerned so let's head over to the first crop okay so this is the first one you notice I have a question mark after crop because I'm not sure whether it is actually a crop or just a flower because potatoes will look at like that at, in their final stage of growth. So I can see if there's any others around that might be in different stages of growth. That appears to be the only one. That's unusual, but it can sometimes happen. So the only way I'm going to find out is by digging it up. Oh yeah, oh cool, yes, yes. We have potatoes and a, a potato seed. All right, uh, that's a good start. I guess I can get rid of this now since there are no others here. And we'll move on to look at these tomato plants over here. See you there. Okay, next up here are our tomato plants. You can see this one isn't red enough, so it's not ripe enough to be picked. And I don't think this one is either. Yeah, that just does not look a deep enough red, which would make sense because they were both in more or less the same state when we last looked at them. Oh, I should check the time. All this walking around does take time. And we have until about 7.30. I can check one more crop. And that will be this thing here, due south of us. See there. Okay, crop number three is this here, which I believe are sugar beets. There was one over here, which I pulled up, and it was in, I'm pretty sure, the same stage that these are in now, and it was not yet ripe. So these look like they probably have another stage to go yet, so we can't pluck them out of the ground yet. And again, let's check our time. Yeah, we definitely need to get back now. So we didn't get very far. I really wanted to check the fruit tree, but that will have to wait. Okay, I'll see you 
back at this campsite. Well, not campsite. It's our home. It just looks like a campsite right now. <laughs> It'll look less like it when we're done. See there. There we are. Yeah, you can see they're both done now. And well, it's probably after 8. Oh, gee, 9.30. So, yeah, they finished up over an hour ago. Well, should still be molten. Yeah, it's still molten. Good. So, the biggest thing I want is the chisel. Next biggest thing, I guess a pretty close priority, is the prospector's pick. Ah, it just solidified. Ah, that is so annoying. Man. Didn't even finish up. We finished, so we got our chisel, but it didn't even finish giving us the uh, pickaxe. Ah, so I gotta fire it again. I shouldn't have screwed around with the other. Um, going for that other crop. Okay. Well, this means, if nothing else, that I can do up a few more of these molds. So let me do that. Whoops. It also means now I won't have to suffer the consequences of uh, having misestimated the amount, having overestimated, rather, the amount of copper that I needed. I actually think I have enough in here, right? Yeah, there we go. Fur logs this time. And sure, let's throw another torch on it. Yeah, that'll do. Oh. Standing too close. That'll get him started. And I should. Uh, get myself liquidated a bit here. And these are my last two of the venison. And so we do have this potato. <laughs> so let's go and plant the potato first and then we'll uh, move on to a few other things. Since it's daylight, I can show you the other stuff I want to show you. So. Oops, wrong thing. Well, the seeds, not the potatoes. I'll do the sign later. Okay. Now, in old TFC, if you have a look at these two trees here, um, I can't remember what they are, maple, something. Oh, these are Douglas fir. that's right. Um, they're the same type of tree, and their leaves intermix. Okay. The way that the felling algorithm worked when you chop down a tree is it would basically go up from the point that you chopped it would go up and fell all those logs and fell any attached leaves that were of the right tr type and any other you know logs that it found within there so that meant if two tr two trees of the same type were had their leaves intermingled chopping down this tree would actually end up chopping down both of them but if you watch here now in uh, tng that no longer happens See, this tree is still standing. So people used to build these in TFC, old TFC used to build these really compact tree farms where you just like line them all up, line a bunch of them up, and then you could set one end and just chop it down and have the whole forest go down. It still used up the same amount of your axe as if you had to chop them individually, but it took a whole lot less time. So no longer can we do that. I guess that's the other thing I should point out. Yeah, I've got plenty of axe left, good. Um, for those who have never played TFC at all, you may have noticed I'm always, that I'm always chopping at the base of the tree and that unlike regular Minecraft, the whole tree comes down when I do that. Okay. Um, so 
that's why you chop at the bottom because in TFC it only the block that you chop comes out and all the ones above it you know as God and Newton intended so you want to unless you want to leave a stump behind you always want to chop them down from the very base okay um, the other thing I need I want to demonstrate I need to pick for uh, Here's the other one I want to talk about. Don't know how I've, I believe I've done this on camera, but I don't know what I talked about. So when you break up, uh, I might as well demonstrate it first. So this is known as raw rock. Okay, it's the rock you find normally in the ground, and it could be andesite or diorite. There's all these various types of rock, but they're when they're in this form, it's raw. I oh, just threw my axe away. Okay, when you uh, when you mine up that rock, that raw rock, you end up with this stuff here. It's just called andesite rock. You can basically think of it as like rubble. But anyway, you can combine four of those to give you cobble. So that's the, you know, cobblestone, and you can have one for each type of rock. Cobblestone is like dirt in that it obeys gravity. So just like we can't build our house out of dirt because it'll fall into us, fall in on us, we can't build it out of uh, cobble either. Same thing. So early on, before you have a chisel, a chisel will let us get blocks out of this massive rock here that we can actually build with. So before you have a chisel, well actually I have a chisel now, didn't I? That, that one finished up, so we can demonstrate that. Cool. Oh, yes. Nice. Okay. Sticks. There's the stick. Okay. Uh, the one other thing I need, I don't need the hoe right now, is I need a hammer. This is the pattern for a hammer. If we were trying to make a mold for a hammer, it would be the inverse of this, of course. Okay. And the hammer goes in our offhand, the same place we put a shield, or you know, if we were fighting and uh, we wanted to be able to fight with a knife as well, we'll go in there. But so the hammer goes in our offhand, and then with the chisel in this hand here. We can click on the click on a block, or click on some raw rock rather, and you see it's changed now. It looks a bit smoother, and it looks like it's got beveled edges. So this is now smooth rock or smooth stone. I think they call it smooth stone. So this will be smooth andesite or smooth andesite stone, smooth andesite. Okay. Now these, these smoothies here. They we can they they hold their place. They don't obey gravity, so they we those we can build with. <laughs> they we can build with. Oh, my English teacher would be horrified. Now, um, let's, um, what else was I going to do here? Oh yeah. Okay. Now, if you. Um, look to the very right of my toolbar down below. You'll see there's like a a white square inside of a white square. Um, so that represents what mode the chisel is in. And by default, I think it's the M key that switches between modes. Okay, I'll be with that in a second. Just finishes up. So the normal mode is smoothing. If I hit M once, then... Oh, is it not working? Yeah, okay, it's not. Well, the staircase mode is not working. Let's see if the other mode works. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if it doesn't work at all or if it just doesn't work on raw stone. Okay, so in old TFC, if I was in the staircase mode, it would chisel out this rock into a staircase shape. And it's... It's staircase in the rock, meaning that 
if you were to take a pick to it, you'd still just end up with rubble. Um, you wouldn't end up with a stone staircase, right? So it's as if you took some rock in place and chiseled steps into it. And, and then this would be slab mode, so you could chisel it into a half slab. So it'll be interesting to see whether none of these other modes work yet, or if it only works on stone and other forms. So we'll have a look at that. But right now, right now, it's all done. Let's get back to filling in our molds. Pickaxe, oh yeah, who's the half-filled one? The prospector's pick, right? Yeah, or not half, but partially. Didn't quite make it before. Okay. And then the shovel. And the scythe. And then one ingot into a mold and another ingot in the mold and one of the reasons you want to be try and match you know the amount of copper in the vessel with the you know, number of molds you have to pour it into is because any that's left over will solidify and you won't be able to use that vessel for anything else until you get it out so just as you saw there it solidified on me and I had to remelt it so you have to go and if you had five units left, you'd have to, if you had an empty uh, ingot mold like this ready, then that's what I do is I just pour the excess if I happen to have any into an empty ingot mold. But if not, then you just, you, you won't be able to use that vessel until you've got something else, some other mold to pour it into. So that's why it's handy to match these things up. Okay. Um, we got lots of tools here. Lots of tool heads, rather. Ooh, sword. Okay, and let's put handles on these puppies. Sword, and the scythe, and I think that's it. Okay. Okay, so for now I'll just put these down here. Um, I don't know that I'm ever going to want to use uh, two fire pits at the same time again, so let's fill that in. Don't think I need this log right now. Smooth stone. Where am I keeping my stone? Rocks and dirt. Oh, I actually don't have anything. Well, it can go in here for now. And so that's the dirt. That's the rock. Oh, and then I've got these two guys here. Okay, so the ingots, they're cooled, right? Oh, yeah. Or they're solid. They're cool enough to be solid. So you just put the mold, the ingot mold with the copper in it, into your crafting area, and then you can pull out an ingot. So right now they've still got a temperature on them, so they won't stack unless they ex happen to be exactly the same temperature, which, of course, is highly unlikely. I can unload these. Um, so the other thing we can demonstrate now, let's find a tree that I might want to get rid of. Oh, we'll pick on this guy again. So you've seen me several times now pick up sticks off the ground. Um, so that's obviously one of the yearly ways of doing it. You can also get them by punching at the leaves of trees. Same as in regular Minecraft. Um, punching at leaves of trees can take forever, and running around picking them up off the ground isn't a whole lot faster either. So you can use the scythe instead, and it takes out, I think, a 3x3x3 three by three by three block of leaves all at once. So, you know, up to nine times as fast 
And that's a quick way to get a bunch of bunch of sticks. And you'll notice it also, you know, here it also lets you get uh, saplings for whatever tree it is that you're taking leaves off of. And I guess the last thing to show is, yeah, the stone axe and the steel axe. So let's come over here, have a look at this guy, and chop him down. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, nine Mississippi. So let's see how much faster Mr. Copper is. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, six Mississippis instead of nine. That's quite a bit faster. Yeah, I like that. Okay, oops. And believe it or not, that's all that we have time for in this episode. I hope you'll join me here next time. Bye.